What is up guys, it's the boy the life of soul, aka the bodybuilding banker and in today's video I'm going to be transparent with you guys there's something heavy on my heart and I'm going to make a confession but if you want to find out, stay tuned to the end and enjoy the video so a bit of context for you guys as to why I started this channel and um, for me it was really born out of hardship and what I mean by this is I grew up in South East London in a place called Ellsbury um it wasn't the most affluent area however for me i wouldn't change any of it you know i had very very strong parents who were big on education and thankfully i grew up with a good network of friends and after a while i managed to do well in school move to a more urban area and go to one of the top universities in the uk and get into investment banking but it wasn't easy at all i had to jump through so many hoops as many of my friends will tell you but on that journey, I learned so much. And so I feel compelled to share as much of it as I can on um, social media. And I began to do that through Snapchat. Um, but more people began to ask me, how do you balance fitness with finance? How do you manage to stay motivated all the time? And the first thing I'm going to say is I am not perfect. I have my up days, I have my down days. But I always try and stay focused on the ultimate goal and I enjoy it, it's a passion of mine. So a lot of people go gym for different reasons, whether it's to boost your confidence, whether it's to change your look. For, but for me, I personally go gym because it's my alone time. It's my time to reflect. It allows me to be really, really focused. We live in a world where there's an attention deficit. There's social media out, and it's very, very hard of people to do deep work, to focus on certain tasks. And for me, gym allows me to solely focus on me, you know, developing my physique, essentially imagining out the physique that I want and building it in a gym. And I just think that is fantastic. And that's probably why I've kept so consistent because I look at the bigger picture. Um, but I, like I said, as I continue to show this sort of content, a lot of people were asking me, can you produce this in some form of longer form content? And the fact that I really enjoyed this, this embarked me on the journey to start my YouTube. The fitness industry is fantastic and I've learned so much from it. However, for me, I feel like there's not much when it comes to the idea of work-life balance. And what I mean by this is, you know, someone who works in the corporate world, who works a very intense job, but also manages to live a healthy and fit lifestyle. And I personally took on the mantle, you know, I took on the responsibility to produce this sort of content to show that you don't have to do fitness full time to look and have your dream body. It just comes down to hard work, discipline, dedication and organisation. So I've come to admit to you guys, I haven't been perfect um, and I've been cheating on my diet. <laughs> I know you guys are probably thinking, is that what you wanted to reveal, So, But, you know, it, it's, it's a lot more than that. I, I think I was driving in my car one day. Um, I was going to an event. And it was like midday and I was really, really sleepy. And I'm thinking, okay, I've got eight hours. I don't think it was eight hours. I got a couple of hours of sleep. But I just felt physically exhausted. My bones were aching. So what did I do? I stopped for a bit, you know, I rested, but I still felt exhausted a few days later. I went to the physio, got some work done, but I still felt exhausted the week after. And then I just looked and I thought to myself, okay, you work a corporate job, so you can work anything from 70 hours a week plus. You create YouTube content, you know, you're building a business, you're building your startup, Total Fit. So I thought to myself, you know what, it's okay to have a rest. You know, I'm a very ambitious individual. I've set really, really high goals, like a lot of you, but you know, there comes a point where you should view rest as a point of inflection where you can reflect on your goals and allow you to be a better version of you. Yes, sometimes we get caught in this world of hustling and bustling and trying to be 110% at all times, but as much as I like to believe I'm human, I'm not a machine. 
And so I just decided to take some time out, take time off my diet, literally dropped my phone and went to like the nearest well-being center, went to like a spa and just relaxed. Turned off the phone and just had some time to myself and I felt really, really refreshed. I felt amazing. And I just wanted to encourage you guys that although you might see me posting a lot of content, you see me in shape, I'm not perfect at all. Sometimes I do slip. I love food. If any of you know me, I love to eat. So being on a diet itself can be quite restrictive. But the way I try to look at it is, what is the bigger picture for me? What am I trying to achieve? And that's how I get through. But I want to tell you that it's fine to sometimes slip up. It's fine. But as long as you try and be consistent and focus on a bigger goal and learn and don't let it get you down, you'll always be moving forward. So how does that look going forward? Well, I was supposed to compete. Um, just to give you some context, I go to a well-known gym called Cray for Weights and Fitness. And you know, I always preach environment is everything. And in this gym, there's a lot of world-class athletes, a lot of people who are so knowledgeable about health and fitness. And I've definitely learned a lot. And I decided to compete um, and put myself forward for the men's physique category. And so that required me to go on what you call a prep. Again, I'm a novice, I'm learning, but generally preps can be anything from 20 to 16 weeks where you're on a diet, you normally employ a coach and you try to develop and bring forward the best physique possible. So what happens in this prep is you're training extremely hard and you're dieting. And as you go on further and further throughout prep, your food reduces, your cardio increases, your training gets more and more intense. So generally, when you finally get to show day, you're very, very lean. And when I say lean, you are at extremely low levels of body fat. Just to reiterate, this is my personal account of undergoing a prep, and I don't speak for anyone else. But, you know, fat is often demonized. And if you think of back to our ancestors who needed to survive, they became very, very good at storing fat because they didn't know where the next meal would come from. So when it comes to losing fat, sometimes our bodies can be stubborn and it can take a while. And that's why you have to be in a calorie deficit. And sometimes you have to not only train really hard, but do cardio in order to continue burning calories. Now, from my personal experience, the lower my food got, you know, the more I thought about food. So I would be with friends, I'd be doing work, I'd be recording content and all I can constantly think was food because, you know, I was in a deficit. You know, I wasn't eating as much as I would like. So I was always thinking of binging out and then it distracts you from some of your day-to-day -day activities. Exercising actually becomes harder because if you think of it, you have less carbohydrates, for example, depending on where you are in prep, you have less muscle glycogen which is the fuel so sometimes workouts could be harder and then the recovery phase could be also harder so you're often tired stressed and frustrated and these are some of the emotions that i felt you know while whilst i was prepping so yeah i was going through all of this and like i said many people do it and it's a choice i made you don't you don't have to be you know stage lean you could be whatever levels of body fat and be extremely happy I just set myself a goal that, you know what? I've been going to the gym for a number of years. I want to see how best my physique can look naturally, you know, by applying the right nutrition, by getting a coach on board and going for a prep. And I want to be honest with you guys. You know, I will be traveling abroad and I'll be celebrating my birthday in style. And I was just thinking how cool it would look to be on the beach, be ripped to shreds, and just celebrate and party. So what does that mean? It means that I will be still competing, but I will be extending my prep to around November. So currently the show that I was intending to compete in would be in eight weeks time. And I'll be honest, I've binged. Um, I binged a lot. <laughs> I love food. And there was one day where I was just like, you know what? I can't handle this. And again, there's a lot of people that have done it, but for me personally, I just went absolutely crazy. But the problem was, 
you know, I started feeling sorry for myself and I was allowing it to get down. I said, you know what, is this productive for me? Is this gonna allow me to achieve my other goals? And how can I quickly solve the solution? So I spoke to a lot of positive people around me who gave me tips and said they've all been for it. And I said, you know what, I still wanna stick to my overall goal. So I decided to push my prep down further. So for me, my rationale to why I decided to compete was, I wanted to see myself in my finest form. You know, I believe that if I stuck for a prep for say 16 weeks, did every exercise, did all my cardio sessions, did all my steps, ate the right food, I can bring an amazing package on stage. I've been blessed with fantastic genetics. I have a very, very committed and disciplined attitude and I love training. You know, but like I said, it came at a price. It came at a price where I felt energy, so much energy was focused on training and looking a certain way that I neglected other parts of my life and my mental health. So why am I telling you guys? Well, the first and most important thing is it's fine to sometimes change the course. You know, we are all focused on a certain destination and sometimes we have this planned route that we're gonna take, but sometimes there's obstacles. And for me in this case, the show that I was planning to do was eight weeks away. And I decided what would give me the best opportunity to one, bring the best package, but also feel better and manage the other parts of my life. And so I'll be doing a first time a show in around 15 weeks time. I'm super, super excited. I've already been in prep. So what that means is I'm starting for a, starting with a better base and you know, depending on the feedback from this video, I want to be completely transparent and visible with you, the highs and the lows of what it's like to be in a prep. I also want to be accountable to you guys because I don't want to be telling you in six weeks time that I decided not to do the show because I binged again. So yeah. That's it from me. Um, I'm really, really looking forward to doing this. Again, this is out of my comfort zone. And one of the mantras I'm going this year, going with this year is, I gotta get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And at that point, that's where you experience growth. I will be doing a first timer show, like I said, and I'll be doing a natural federation. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it, guys. I'm looking forward to showing you my final form looking forward to showing you the journey and if you guys are interested let me know in the comments you know i'll be trying my best to upload you know weekly series of what it's like to be on a prep especially like i said with a corporate job um with trying to build a business and just with all the general endeavors that i go through but thanks for watching guys i really really I'm grateful for all of your comments. It's the boy, the life of soul, AKA the bodybuilding banker, and I'm out. Peace.